Okay, uh, shall we start? So today the um we actually don't have our general announcement and then we'll move to the uh technical discussion directly. So today the, the third part of the hidden Markov model is actually the end of the hidden Markov model part. So the last part, so be patient. <laughs> So today, uh, the mostly uh, the discussion is actually shallow. The uh, first, I will explain about the GMM extension, but the the way we will extend the GMM is actually quite uh, the, the straightforward. So I mostly kind of brush, uh, the the um, explain the overview uh, of how we do that, and actually the all of the kind of uh, formulation and algorithm are almost same, and I will. Explain explain about uh, how it is different. Uh, and the uh, another kind of important alg algorithm is Vitabi algorithm. So that I will also spend the time and explain it. Uh, and hopefully I can finish it uh, uh, a bit earlier and then spend some time for the uh, coding assignment uh, the, uh, the explanation, uh, which is the uh, most, one of the most important <laughs> part of the uh, this lecture uh, actually. So. Uh, coding assignment is about the HMM. Okay, so uh, the, let's start uh, the to discuss about the uh, the HMM. So we are still uh, stuck in the acoustic modeling part uh, uh, since it is based on hidden Markov model. And then uh, today's uh, the discussion. Uh, before I will move to the Gaussian mixture model, I explain that uh, every time uh, we are working on a single Gaussian model. But I already mentioned in the beginning that the single Gaussian model is not very powerful uh, in terms of the modeling. So the, uh, the, today I will explain about the, the extension to the Gaussian mixture model. Uh, it is more powerful, but actually compared with uh, neural network, it's not so powerful. <laughs> okay, so the, the procedure is actually the same as uh, what uh, the, the I have explained to the uh, uh, you guys about the single Gaussian based approaches, uh, we use an uh, introduction of the latent variable, a uh, complete data likelihood, uh, auxiliary function, and the parameter estimation. And I will explain it one by one. But again, mostly I explained. So I just exp uh, the the uh, the, the uh, remark uh, which part we should kind of. Uh, uh, the, the extend, and I didn't kind of explain about the details uh, that in today's lecture. So first, uh, we already uh, discussed that the, the introduction of latent variable in the hidden Markov model, we consider the uh, alignment variable as a latent variable. But in the Gaussian mixture model, we actually have to consider one more, uh, the extra, uh, the latent variable which I will explain it in the following slides. So first, uh, the, I already mentioned that single Gaussian, especially with the diagonal covariance, uh, is not enough to uh, the capture uh, the complex uh, patterns in the speech, uh, the, the, uh, the features. And then uh, the, to efficiently uh, model these kind of our, uh, patterns, Actually, we often use the uh, multiple Gaussians. And then I again, we call it the Gaussian mixture model. And the Gaussian mixture model is uh, the rewritten as uh, this uh, the kind of a form. There's a pointer, yeah. So without this uh, the summation, this is actually the Gaussian mixture, uh, single Gaussian model. There's nothing kind of special. And then the extension is just uh, the, the adding the uh, prepare the Gaussian distribution uh, for other, other uh, K components, and then just taking the weighted sum. So these are weighted sum. So it's actually similar to the state transition or uh, the initial uh, the, the, uh, transition part. Uh, we actually uh, the have to satisfy the uh, sum to one condition uh, so that it's uh, the, uh, the showing the kind of a mixture weight uh, the information. But basically the equation, extension of the equation is uh, like this. 
and then uh, the, let's uh, the, the, uh, discuss about the, uh, the, the latent variable in the Gaussian mixture case. So actually similar to the uh, hidden Markov model cases, in the Gaussian mixture cases, we actually don't know which observation uh, that corresponded to the this kind of our uh, other each of the Gaussian. So we actually consider all possible uh, the, the patterns of the uh, the point that would be uh, represented as a multiple uh, the Gaussian. So this is actually almost same as the uh, the alignment problem, right? The alignment problem uh, it's uh, Sorry, it's a, a one dimension case, but alignment problem, we also try to kind of uh, uh, the providing the one of the data point uh, to be uh, the aligned to uh, the each of the other uh, sequence, right? And the Gaussian mixture model is also using the same uh, alignment uh, variables, which becomes a latent variable. And then uh, this is similar to the, uh, the alignment variable. Is represented by uh, this kind of uh, the, the, the sequence. So this sequence is actually uh, the including the, all the kind of uh, the speech feature from one to T. And then this one maybe uh, uh, belongs to K equal one, maybe belongs to K equal two, K equal three, K equal four. We are not sure. So this other uh, representation is actually showing that each of the kind of other cases, each of the point, uh, whether this other point is uh, the assigned to the uh, one of the mixture. So again, this is very similar to the alignment uh, variable that we introduced before. But actually Gaussian mixture cases, I say it's, it is one of the kind of our typic, uh, the special case of the alignment cases where uh, we don't have a, a constraint like a left to right, uh, the, or three state or something like that. It can be actually moving to anything. So these are kind of a Gaussian mixtures uh, the latent variable. So uh, the, besides that, it is actually exactly similar to the other uh, uh, the alignment variable uh, we are uh, used for the HMM. So we actually are uh, introducing the additional latent variable B, T, or uh, the set sequence of this to be represented as the uppercase B. And this is actually same length as the observations. So these kind of uh, the, the latent variables are very similar to the uh, HMM latent variable. And actually the, uh, the mathematical uh, treatment of how to deal with them is also almost same. So that's why the, this lecture, I didn't kind of fully uh, redo all the kind of derivation, but I guess you guys could kind of uh, the, the, uh, the understand uh, how we kind of generalize uh, this uh, with the HMM state. Okay, so now the, uh, the, the we kind of introduce the Gaussian mixture uh, the component, uh, and then uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the likelihood uh, is, actually usually written uh, like this, where the uh, Gaussian mixture index is also depending on the HMM. So to specify our problem, we actually have our kind of two other hidden state. One is HMM and the other is Gaussian mixture model. And then the other, uh, the, this means that we also have a two uh, index uh, in the uh, the Gaussian mixture uh, models. So just you know uh, that, that you could see that you know each of the HMM state uh, we will have our uh, the mixture index. So this is actually the uh, the extension that we have uh, the performed. By the way, uh, some people may feel that uh, the this means that each state would have the same number of k, right? But uh, the, it can be actually changing, right? Some of the state may have a more Gaussian, a Gaussian component, and some of the state, or some of the even phoneme, may have a smaller uh, the, the Gaussian 
uh, number of Gaussians, uh, the mixtures. So uh, this is actually one of the way, just uniformly setting the number of Gaussian component uh, per each state uh, to be the same. But uh, the other kind of uh, extension or our actual kind of uh, the, uh, practical problem, this part actually can be changed uh, depending on the, uh, the, the state or phoneme. And actually, uh, the many of the system are having such kind of structure and so on. But just for this kind of uh, lecture, as a simplicity, I will kind of using the, uh, the always using K uh, for this other, other HM and other state and so on. So, and uh, how to set the K is also a very uh, the important uh, the, uh, part, but uh, uh, the basically we just empirically setting this number, like a 32 or 64 or something like that. Of course, we have a more data, we may uh, the increase the number of components, uh, but it's quite empirically uh, decided. And uh, uh, there are a lot of ways to, by the way, uh, the estimating the number of uh, the, the, uh, the components, or even uh, the HMM state, as I mentioned, it is always kind of a, a not three state. It can be four or five. Uh, it can be actually uh, better to be changed depending on the phoneme and so on, right? And this is actually one of my uh, the first research. When I started speech research, I actually had a tackle uh, this problem, how to find this kind of a K for each phoneme, or even how to kind of uh, the decide uh, the, the, uh, the states, number of states, uh, the, the, uh, the based on the kind of uh, uh, various uh, the information criteria. So that was actually my, uh, first uh, the, uh, the research uh, topic. So just reminds me that some someone actually asked me how to set the number and so on, and just reminds me that my old work. But it it, it was not, it doesn't become become our, uh, the mainstream and the people just using uh, uh, the empirically setting the total number 1000 or something like that. Okay, uh, next are uh, the, the ones we uh, the, the, uh, introduced the latent variable, which is the one for the, uh, the HMM state and the other for the uh, Gaussian mixture component. And these are actually, again, mathematically very similar, uh, the very similar uh, latent variable. So actually the, we can write the, the complete data likelihood by simply uh, the, the, uh, introducing the a mixture uh, weight uh, here, uh, like this. By the way, uh, the, this derivation is similar to what we have done in the, uh, the complete data likelihood cases uh, by using the uh, product rule, uh, the condition independence assumption, some rule, and finally uh, the introducing the concrete distribution uh, to the kind of each of the, uh, the equation, uh, each of the probabilistic distribution function. But again, I didn't. Uh, the explain this part uh, the, uh, because uh, it is uh, the quite straightforwardly extended. Oh, actually, I did prepare it. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I, I didn't uh, fully explain it in the, uh, the uh, this part because it is just kind of uh, having a additional uh, latent variable uh, B uh, in the, uh, the, the formulation and so on. And the next part is the the, uh, the uh, auxiliary function, uh, how to make an auxiliary function. And uh, we try to, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, making the uh, auxiliary function by avoiding to uh, the, use the summation over the other uh, state. And the, in our cases, actually additional other uh, summation over the sequence is introduced, which is the uh, the latent variable uh, for the uh, Gaussian mixture component. And the, compared with the uh, previous single Gaussian cases, we actually have our, our first, you know, uh, the additional four terms. Previously three terms. This is the state transition, uh, sorry, uh, the initial state, state transition, and the Gaussian. But now we have a initial state, state transition mixture weight, 
that is additionally in introduced. And then uh, the, the Gaussian distribution. And the, uh, another uh, important part is that the summation is uh, the, the not only with the, uh, the, the over the state sequence, but also the Gaussian mixture component sequence. So this is a little bit complicated, but basically the, uh, the now we have uh, the tools to uh, the, the, uh, handle this kind of ways uh, based on the uh, various other the maths. So I basically don't fully really kind of explain about it, but uh, the similar to the uh, last uh, lectures, by using the sequence decomposition, uh, distributed property, some rule, and then we can actually derive the uh, the, uh, the auxiliary function. And I also want to remark uh, the, uh, the two part. Uh, one, uh, the, the one part of the remark is that, uh, again, similar to the uh, previous example, summation over the sequence uh, of S and B uh, actually uh, the changes to the summation uh, from J to one, uh, J, uh, J equal one to K and the K equal one to K. I think this could into the summation T. I will check it later. I think this could, should include the summation T. Otherwise, right side is depending on the T. Okay, I will add a modify it. I think this one should include a summation T. But anyway, the, uh, the another part of the, uh, the uh, change is a posterior distribution. In the previous uh, explanation, I uh, the introduced a two a posterior distribution in this stage. Like one is to uh, the include the uh, the uh, the uh, transition uh, po uh, the posterior, and the other is the uh, the occupation part, and the occupation part is the pr probability of we are some point in the HMM trellis, right? And then similarly, we also have a kind of additional index for the Gaussian K. This means that the, we are some place in the torelis and some of the component in the Gaussian. And then uh, this is a, a posterior probability of uh, representing such kind of occupation at uh, the situation. So uh, such kind of uh, the extension happens, but generally this uh, the, uh, the, uh, the extension would be done uh, simply uh, the, by extending the, uh, the, the previous methodology. So the uh, final auxiliary function is actually uh, written uh, by uh, this kind of a form where the uh, summation uh, the, the of the sequence is uh, uh, converted to the summation over the HMM state and the summation over the Gaussian mixture component. So uh, the uh, by doing the similar kind of extension, we can actually build the, the uh, auxiliary function. And then this value, which is actually the, the state transition part is same, but the occupation part having an additional component uh, the, by introducing Gaussian mixture, that is also solved by the forward backward algorithm. And again, I will skip the order derivation, uh, but I just kind of showing the uh, the, the algorithm uh, about the forward algorithm, uh, uh, the forward computation, uh, backward computation, and then uh, the forward backward uh, algorithm. By the way, uh, the forward backward uh, the algorithm, uh, the computation cost is also not to change so much. We just have our kind of additional. Uh, the, the multiplication uh, came from the Gaussian mixture. So of course, you know, this is linearly increased, but not very large. Okay, so now uh, that we have a, a forward backward algorithm and then uh, get the kind of uh, each of the, uh, the 
uh, the transition and the uh, occupation uh, by uh, using the, uh, the uh, forward probability, backward probability, uh, state transition, uh, the mixture weight, and the Gaussian. And the, the denominator is a normalization. So uh, the, by doing that, we can actually compute the, the, uh, the transition probability. And uh, similarly, we can also uh, the, the compute the uh, uh, occupation probability. But I think this one is very intuitive. This part is actually uh, the almost same as the previously best, uh, the, the ob obtained uh, the, the occupation probability for each state. And we also have an additional factor. But this is actually the, uh, the likelihood ratio of the, uh, the component K uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, divided by uh, entire uh, component. So this is actually the probability of uh, the, uh, this uh, the, the case, uh, the mixture component K. Okay? So the mixture component K okay, probability times the, the HMM state, uh, the occupation probability becomes the, uh, this kind of probability. So it's very intuitive. And the last part of the parameter, uh, the estimation, Again, I also skip this part uh, because it's just kind of a having uh, the, the uh, Gaussian, uh, the, the mixture uh, weight component. So basically by using the same mass, we can actually estimating this, uh, the, the mixture weight and the corresponding all other parameter, which are almost equivalent to the previous the estimation process. And the same for the bomb welds. Uh, there are some kind of uh, the difference like including the uh, the mixture weight here, and instead of uh, the, the estimating the uh, the occupation probability for each state, uh, this it becomes the, the for each state and for each mixture component, uh, but all other uh, algorithms are same, so that I kind of basically the skip uh, this uh, the the, uh, the uh, explanation, but with this actually uh, the single Gaussian HMM is uh, extended to the Gaussian mixture model. Okay, good. Next, last algorithm is the beta V algorithm. So I uh, the, the repeated to mention that uh, we actually don't know the, uh, the alignment, uh, the deterministic alignment patterns, so that we have to consider all possible uh, the, the HMM state, right? So then the, you know, we had a lot of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the equations to finally handle this kind of uh, the summation over the all sequences. Uh, this is uh, that again, because we don't, we cannot observe the uh, HMM alignment, uh, the, the pattern. So we have to kind of infer them. And we use a probabilistic way, which means that we cannot deterministically uh, the, uh, define the alignment. However, this is true, but we can actually estimate the most likely uh, the state alignment by using the similar techniques. And uh, we actually have a, luckily have a such kind of algorithm uh, called the Vitae. Uh, the algorithm. So uh, that will be a kind of a last part uh, of this kind of lecture. So before uh, the, the moving to the, uh, the beta V algorithm, I will explain a little bit about the search. So uh, the, this is actually uh, one of the, let's say the pattern uh, of the kind of graph. And then uh, let's uh, the think about the search problem where we try to find the highest score, accumulated the highest score pattern as a kind of our goal. By the way, search 
generally also using the minimum loss. <laughs> so it's a little bit confusing. But uh, I'm, we are starting from the maximum likelihood. <laughs> so I change it to the highest score. So please do not confuse it. So, And then uh, there are several algorithms, greedy search, uh, beam search. And then the, I will also explain the, the BitAB algorithm based BitAB search. And the, uh, the, I will explain that each of the method, search method, one by one. So first, uh, the, the, uh, what is the highest score? So again, let's just arbitrarily taking one uh, the path, just this one, this red one. And then uh, the, we go from here to here. And then accumulating all the score. In this case, it's two, 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 three. So the total score is actually nine, right? And it's, it's just, by the way, it's not just a number. It is actually, our problem is quite other similar. Just, you know, other, other I use the addition, but uh, this is actually can be replaced as a, it, the probability. In this case, of course, it, it, the, the, the less than one. But anyway, uh, the can be uh, the approximated as uh, the multiplication of the probability, which we actually uh, the introduced in many of the cases, like, you know, uh, the chain rule is multiplication of the uh, probability, right? So actually getting the kind of a, a sequence of the probability corresponding to uh, the getting the kind of a path of this one and the final kind of a, uh, the accumulated score corresponding to the, uh, the uh, multiplication of the product probability in the log domain, by the way, log domain. Okay, yeah. So this is actually quite uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, general uh, problem. And actually, again, uh, the used to uh, the, uh, represent our problem. Okay, so this is nine. And uh, the first uh, the, the search algorithm uh, is greedy search algorithm. This is actually every time get the kind of our highest pass. Let's start from here. And then uh, the, the, this one is one and this one is two. So you're just taking this one. And then next, uh, the two and the three, right? And then we just uh, the take the uh, highest one again. And uh, now we don't have uh, any other kind of score, uh, any other kind of uh, other the hypothesis. So we just kind of accumulate in this two and the three. So this is a, a the greedy algorithm. Every time we make a decision, just kind of you know taking the uh, the, the highest one in that kind of position. Uh, that's it. And uh, fortunately, this one, two, three, two, three, actually better than uh, the previous uh, the, the pass. So this uh, the greedy pass is actually uh, the one of the way uh, to find the, uh, the good uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the score. But it is actually, uh, as some of you may, you know, uh, the note, this is actually a very big approximation. Uh, and then we will move to the short quiz. So actually, uh, the, the, uh, the, I will show you the answer uh, the, uh, with the second cases. Second case, uh, beam search. Uh, greedy search, we always uh, the take the kind of a top uh, the, the, uh, the uh, result. But the, the, this means that, you know, for example, from here to here, this one might be, might get a higher score later in the accumulation of the kind of passes, right? So we are not sure this kind of a decision is correct or not. And then uh, the how to extend this? We just leave uh, two kinds of uh, hypotheses uh, for a while. Like for example, in, the, uh, in this case, that's always kind of keeping the two best score. So in the initial part, uh, even this one is actually higher path, we just keep this one. 
Uh, we just keep the, this one as well. So again, we are not sure this one can be better and so on. And then let's move to the next one. And from here, we actually have an accumulation of the, you know, the, the plus three and the plus two. And here, we also have an accumulation of plus five and plus two. And then we actually have a four possibility. And then computing all kinds of four possibility. And then we just keeping the top two. And interestingly, it turns out actually that actually that this path still exists. Well, actually, this path is already in this timing higher score than the greedy search one. Greedy search we just go through here, right? So the answer is that already the beam search is almost always better than greedy search. And then uh, doing a similar kind of uh, the uh, the procedure uh, again, and then uh, we finally kind of are uh, getting the two passes. And among kind of two passes that reaching the kind of uh, the final goal, and then keeping the highest one. And I explained this other uh, with always other uh, 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 the two hypotheses, but of course we can make it larger. It can be you know five or ten or thousand. Eh? And then actually this is uh, the more uh, the, the, this would be uh, the theoretically definitely better. But of course, this is the, the also the increase the cost of the computation and the memory, right? So uh, the the uh, the also the k equal one always uh, the goes to the uh, the greedy search. So uh, this is actually uh, the one of the uh, the beam uh, the uh, one of the search technique uh, called the beam search. By the way, by doing that, it's actually scored eleven, and the previously greedy search is ten. So actually, it turns out that uh, beam search is uh, the getting the better performance. So greedy search is not uh, getting the highest score, unfortunately. But uh, this is still approximation, right? If k equal very large, it can be more accurate, but it is still approximation. And the next one is the beta b. And the beta b is actually not based on the approximation. We could get the highest other, other pass other by using the special algorithm. So beta b is actually starting from the uh, the, the, uh, the uh, either or of the, the state uh, the, uh, posterior or uh, the joint uh, the distribution. Either is fine. And in our uh, the formulation, we actually using this kind of joint uh, distribution uh, of the observation and the state, complete data likelihood. And then uh, the beta b algorithm is actually to uh, try to focus on this value. This is the from one to t minus one to have a maximum pass. And then uh, the, uh, the score uh, that uh, the given uh, that we are in the st equal to j. So I will explain a bit more uh, the, the detail. So again, the st equal to uh, j means that we are some uh, the, the, uh, the point uh, in this trace, right? For example, the case of the, uh, the, uh, the time index equal to four and the HMM state is three, then we are here. And then the, the beta of uh, uh, the, uh, the algorithm is uh, the, uh, defining this function until here, uh, the, until we reach here, uh, we try to kind of uh, get to the maximum passes. In this case, it, it can be this one, or it can be uh, the, any of the paths, but uh, the maximum one, it's, uh, the, we, if we found that this is the maximum one, uh, this would become the, uh, the, the beta v pass, a beta v function. Given the maximum pass from here to here, and then uh, the, we get to this kind of point. By the way, maximum uh, the pass from uh, one to three can be changed depending on the position. For example, again, in these cases, 
the maximum position, a uh, maximum position a uh, uh, path can be this one. But in these cases, like for example, that the, the HM state two cases, second cases, previous path cannot be the maximum path because it's actually as I cannot reach to this one, right? We cannot go from three to two. So I just want to mention that the uh, the maximum pass would depend on where we are. So this function is uh, the, uh, the actually depending on the uh, the position, each of the position, uh, we will have a different actually uh, the, uh, the, the max, uh, the, the S1, uh, the S2, one, two, T minus we could get. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of definition, but actually this one is uh, the key function to find the uh, most likely path. So let's formulate it with a recursive uh, way. I think it is similar to what we have done in the, uh, the forward and the backward algorithm. So first, the, the case of t equal one and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the substituting it to this kind of uh, the, uh, the function, it is just uh, there is no kind of uh, the the uh, the, uh, the prior uh, state sequence. So this is actually just a kind of likelihood at the, the timestamp one. And then uh, let's uh, the work on the recursive uh, the equation. We focus on this kind of uh, the equation, and the, the uh, this the procedure is same as the uh, the, the forward algorithm. So I will basically kind of skip the detail, but we use the sequence decomposition, a product rule, a conditional independence assumption, and some rule to finally uh, obtain uh, this kind of uh, the uh, the uh, the recursive uh, equation, and then we take the max from s one to uh, the one to t minus one. But it turns out that this other max is actually represented by the previous uh, the this uh, delta function. So the find this is the final equation. Uh, this uh, the delta equation is actually recursively updated by uh, uh, the taking the max for every kind of other uh, state for all kind of other uh, the uh, time and so on. So this uh, the, is uh, the, the another uh, ways to avoid the 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 uh, the the, the, uh, the, the all over the possible uh, state sequence. So actually, I didn't mention fully, but this max s one t minus one is very difficult because this is a sub sequence anyway sequence. So we have to consider all possible sequence. So this is almost impossible. And then the, the definition of the function is actually including this kind of operation, which is almost impossible to solve. But it turns out the recursive equation is actually just taking the max for each state. We avoid to have our, uh, the, the maximum of the, the all possible state subsequence. So it is actually very similar to the forward uh, equation, right? Uh, the forward equation also the avoid uh, all possible state sequence summation uh, by using the other uh, forward recursive equation. And the beta B algorithm is also similarly actually uh, the, the, uh, the making it like this. And the other uh, after the other, uh, uh, we perform this kind of our uh, other sequence uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the incremental operation from one to T. And then let's uh, the think about the last part. So last part, uh, uh, if we kind of int, uh, the, the, uh, the substituting this small T to large T, which is the, the end of our kind of sequence. And then uh, after this recursive uh, the, the uh, maximization step, which doesn't have a, uh, the, the, uh, the consider the all possible state sequence. Uh, it actually turns out that this uh, the operation is 
corresponding to what we wanted to uh, solve in the beginning, which is this operation. So after this, uh, the, uh, the, the order kind of uh, the processing is finished in the last uh, the time frame, this actually uh, the, uh, the corresponding to solve this uh, the equation. And the, yes, we have some approximation comes from the HMM, but uh, at, given the HMM, we actually don't use any kind of our approximation like a beam search and so on. We actually consider all possible state sequence uh, given the kind of HMM assumption. And then this uh, the, the algorithm is actually the, uh, the, the derived. So by doing this one, we can actually find the most likely uh, state sequence uh, without the, any approximation. And then the, the move to the next quiz. So the answer is the BW uh, the algorithm. Yeah. So especially in the case of the uh, the, the graph, uh, the, the, as you see, the, you know, beam search, uh, the greedy search is the worst. And the beam search is actually uh, the, uh, the better. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, the beta algorithm providing the best most likely are the path. So I will actually show you that. So I thought it may be good to do that in the, the homework, but anyway, I will explain it. So uh, the first, uh, the, this is a very simple version of the beta V, uh, the, uh, the recursive function, where I only kind of include a state transition. But uh, uh, the uh, the, in the real situation, we actually also have a Gaussian mixture part. So there are some difference, right? But it's just, you know, the thinking always, you know, Gaussian part is kind of a, say, the, uh, uh, providing the same score and so on. And then again, the, uh, the uh, beta V algorithm is, uh, the, uh, the, is a way to find the best, uh, the, the, uh, the state sequence, and then I computed uh, each kind of uh, uh, the beta v, uh, the function, uh, one by one from, you know, uh, the, the t equal to two cases uh, here and here we compute the um, uh, beta v function score, and then moving to the next uh, the frame and compute the kind of uh, all cases and moving to the next case and uh, the computing everyone, uh, uh, all the kind of uh, cases. And then finally uh, reaching the, uh, the uh, end of the, uh, the sequence. And then actually uh, taking the uh, best score, uh, the, the passes, uh, which is uh, the call the backtrack uh, the technique that is also included in the uh, algorithm part of my lecture. But anyway, the answer is actually this one. And let's check it. Actually, this beta V score is 15. Uh, way better than the uh, greedy score or beam search score. So beta V score actually can find the most likely uh, the sequence. By the way, why you know this kind of thing has happened is that there is a, a, a very large <laughs> Uh, the score here. <laughs> so, by the way, but, uh, the, uh, the come up with this graph is not easy, you know. <laughs> come up with a graph that, you know, the greedy is worse than the, <laughs> the, the beam search, and the beam search is worse than the, uh, yeah, the, I found this kind of, you know, a very typical example. But generally, if we don't care, you know, beam search is actually not the part. <laughs> and then beam search and the, uh, the beta uh, the, would be the same score and so on. So it took time to actually come up with this uh, the score in the graph. And the, uh, the, uh, the, this is uh, the beta algorithm. I just kind of summarized the, our recursive uh, part, uh, how to compute. Uh, and then also finally, uh, to get to this kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the path, we actually need to kind of save the pointer. So I actually also including this uh, the, uh, pointer uh, the, uh, uh, part uh, in the, uh, the beta uh, algorithm. 
Okay, this is the about the beta B algorithm. And then I will quickly go through the actually uh, the beta B training. So uh the, the we actually the, the explained about the forward backward algorithm, forward backward computation to uh, the consider the all possible summations. But actually this part is replaced with the beta B algorithm, beta B path. So for the backward, consider all kinds of other uh, uh, passes and the beta B pass cases, we only consider the one path that is obtained by the other uh, beta B algorithm. And then the algorithm is actually uh, become simpler. Previously, we have to consider the all possible kind of uh, even after the kind of uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the auxiliary function and so on, and avoid to have our summation over the sequence, we still have to consider to sum over the, the, the state and so on, state index and so on. But by using the beta B uh, the approximation, we just consider this path. So we don't have to consider uh, this part of the summation and so on. So it's actually uh, the saving the, uh, the computational uh, cost. And uh, uh, this uh, the, is, Practically, not very bad approximation. Uh, the many of the systems are actually also using this other uh, the beta B uh, training uh, and so on. By the way, why this is not so bad? It's empirically we knew that this beta B path is very peaky, uh, the very high probability compared with all other passes. So beta B pass is almost, for example, ninety percent. <laughs> Uh, and then rest of the kind of passes are the very small uh, probability. Uh, so due to that, actually beta B training is uh, the quite popular. By the way, this doesn't mean that the forward backward is uh, the useless. Forward backward is very important. In the case, first, for example, forward is a way to also compute the likelihood, right? And the forward backward is also sometimes very important when uh, the, the, the distribution does not become peaky, which also happens in the case that, for example, the speech is very noisy and so on. In this case, we are not sure which one is a very correct alignment and the probability does not become peaky and the many probability becomes actually at a similar probability. In this case, forward backward is still important and so on. But uh, uh, as a kind of a simple training algorithm, the beta B training is quite often used, where the, the instead of using the other uh, 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 forward backward algorithm, we just using a beta B algorithm and then computing the sufficient statistics and then updating the parameter and so on. So this is actually the simpler version of the forward backward, and this is actually main part of the uh, the, the homework uh, of this uh, the, the the coding assignment. So let's uh, summarize this talk and move to the explanation about it. So first, HMM-GMM extension is quite kind of straightforward. We just introduce in the latent variable and then GMM extension is performed. And we also explained out the beta B. Beta B is the most likely sequence in no approximation. Without being that, we can get the best sequence. And this uh, beta B search is actually used to also the, the simplify the training and so on. 